Here is 8 meter long tapeworm preserved in a museum in Japan but in Wales tapeworms can be up to 40 meter or 130 feet long. Reference is given. Today we shall learn about longest endoparasites among invertebrates, the tapeworms. We shall learn morphology of head region, detailed anatomy of a proglottid, shedding mechanisms, reproductive organs and most importantly life cycle of tenuous solium in detail. You stay with us, will be fruitful at end. Let's start from morphology of anterior region of tapeworm body. Morphology, you know, is external form and appearance of an organism. Tapeworms belong to invertebrate phylum Platyelminthes class Eusestoda. This class includes all tapeworms, that's why it is commonly referred as tapeworm class or class tapeworm. All tapeworm species are endoparasites or internal parasites of various vertebrates like humans, fish, pig, cat, dog, whales and also invertebrates like arthropods. So tapeworms don't have mouth but have rounded and enlarged anterior region scolex which may be confused with head but it is not head actually. Scolex has several suckers all round called as acetabula which they use to anchor themselves in the walls of flesh or intestine. On top of scolex there are several hooks which they use to penetrate the walls initially and then it hold them there in the wall. Please refer the diagram. Just behind the scolex neck is present which is most important and essential region or factory of proglottid manufacturing. Neck continuously make proglottids and push them behind. What are proglottids? Well, proglottids are segments of tapeworms which join together to form elongated body of tapeworms. So youngest proglottids are present nearest to neck. Each proglottid segment is separate from each segment and have its own ways of doing things. Tapeworms are hermaphrodites that is both sexes are present in single individual and actually these sexes are present in each proglottid and they undergo sexual reproduction either self or cross fertilization. Lower diagram is front view of scolex taken from electron microscope and hooks and suckers can be observed in real time. Now let's have a little detail of anatomy of each proglottid. All proglottids have same structure so understanding one is enough for all. Please refer to write diagram and listen the features. Size of each proglottid is around 3 to 5 millimeter in length. It means it can be seen with naked eye. Another salient feature of this organism is that it don't have stomach or gut at all. Then how does it take food and excrete waste? Good question. Well, there is a porous external layer all around the body of tapeworms called a tegument through which it absorb whole nutrients from host and then pass them inside because it take digested food so no further digestion is required that's why it does not need any digestive system. Excretion occurs through specialized excretory canals which runs laterally but joined transversely with each other and excrete the waste through surface. Most important and salient structures of each proglottid is its reproductive organs. We shall focus on them little bit later. Wait. Nerves run from anterior side to posterior side for communication. Another important concept is shedding of proglottids from anterior end. Well, there are two mechanisms known for shedding. We know that proglottids are formed from neck and move posteriorly. So mature proglottids are present at tail region. The first way is most common. Proglottids are shed continuously from posterior end and those whole proglottids move through gut and excrete with feces. In second mechanism, mature proglottids burst 
releasing eggs and sperm directly into intestines of host which then excrete through feces and fertilization may take place between same proglottid gametes or different proglottids of same individual or from another organism in the host now before understanding life cycle Let's have a look at reproductive structures in each proglottid. Please focus on diagram and listen carefully. Each proglottid may have several ovaries and up to 1000 prominent testes. In the diagram, we can observe leaf-like testes which are connected with each other through tubules and ultimately release sperms in sperm duct and then excrete them out through genital pore. Several ovaries release up to 50,000 eggs into oviduct and then eggs move to receptacle for storage. These eggs then released through vagina to genital pore. Main function of uterus is to provide nourishment, lubrication and shell formation of tapeworms eggs. Please refer diagram. One important thing to note is Mehli's gland present beneath over type. They are round shaped glands discovered by Carl Frederick Mellies and Screet lubrication to uterus and also shell contents of eggs which are then passed toward over type. And the last structure yolk glands. Yolk glands produce yolk for eggs as the name suggests. So now we have a knowledge about reproductive system. Let's move to understand the life cycle of a typical tapeworm Tinea solium. As in diagram, let's follow the numbering step by step to complete the cycle. Please listen carefully the details by following the diagram. Before starting, you must know what are definitive host and intermediate host. Well, intermediate host are those in which a parasite complete some asexual stages of life. There may be two or three intermediate host while Definitive host is final host in which a parasite completes sexual phases and becomes fully mature. Now let's understand the life cycle. We are starting from eggs or whole proglottids in feces which are now present in environment. These eggs or proglottids are ingested by intermediate host like pig or swine in this case. As fertilized eggs enter into swine, they hatch and an oncosphere larvae is produced. Now this oncosphere larvae has muscles, flame cells and hooks for attachment. This larva then penetrate into swine digestive wall and reach to coelom or body cavity or in specific organs and tissues of host. When this larva reaches into destination, it then develop into cysticercus or bladder worm. This name is given because it form a cyst around it and further development is arrested or paused. When this intermediate host swine is eaten by another host like humans or other intermediate host, this cysticercus larvae shed its cyst and reach intestine and develop into adult tapeworm. In this way, life cycle of tinea solium is completed. Think thrice before eating undercooked foods. There is another chance that fertilized eggs directly enter into human again. These fertilized eggs will hatch angosphere larvae in the intestine and then larvae will penetrate into various organs like subcutaneous tissues, brain and eyes and cause infections. Such diseases or infections are termed as cysticercosis. So wash your hands thoroughly after excretion to avoid such infections which are very dangerous if they reach brain or eyes. That's for today. Hope you stayed with us and learned. Do support us by liking, sharing and subscribing. Thanks for watching.